Is that better? Joe? No. Very good. Try again then. Mm -hmm. I can confirm. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah. Everybody's got it. Start here. Mayor David Pinnell, Deputy Mayor, Tommy Beach Chair, Councilor Mark Whitner, Councilor Max Moore, Councilor Rick Serna, Councilor Scott Lewis, Councilor Chester Kalinsky, IT Manager Cecil Coxon, Director of Finance of Boomer Community, and myself, Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor Claire Wilson, are in attendance in the Council Chambers. For those participating by video conference, please answer present and remain as called. Councilor Serna? Present. Chief Administrative Officer Foot and Tall Capital Fund Clements. Present. Director of Fire and Emergency Services, Frank Smith. Present. Director of Physical Services, Matt Speakman. Present. That's everything. Thanks, Dan. Uh, and so do you have interest in general nature thereof? None. Uh, minutes from a former person. Is there any other move? Do you then have a move and second? I'll move it. Move by Sarah, second by Moore. I'll agree. Second. Of course, you're voting in favor, right? Yes. Okay. There Next, we have a special meeting of the council held on um, September 30th. Is there any errors or issues on that one? Seeing none, move and second with openings. Winner, Lewis, all in favor? Yes. You're not carried. Next, we have a public meeting. So I need to move and second a public meeting concerning the zone loan bylaw amendment application of Ken, Anthony, and Mary Stover related to the property of Gaina Parks Lot 28, 29. And session three, we call to order at 732. Second, Linsky, Winder, all in favor? Yes. Purpose of this meeting is to consider an application to amend zoning on a surplus farm dwelling proposed to be severed, submitted by Ken and Anthony and Mary Stover, Prop 29, Concession 3, Geographic Township of Malahide, being 52371, called the line. Diana, can you confirm a method date of notice, please? Yes, Your Worship. Notice of the meeting is given by publication in the Elmer Express on September 23rd and 30th. In addition, affected property owners have been 120 meters were sent notice by 3 p.m. first class mail posted 20 days prior to the meeting. Thank you. Michelle, can you do an overview, please? Oops. Sorry, Your Worship. One moment here. Had it on my screen and now I lost it momentarily. So, sorry. The purpose of the proposed amendment is to change the zoning on a surplus farm dwelling lot, which is proposed to be severed. It contains a single detached dwelling and the Amendment will be to change the zoning from a special agricultural A2 zone to a small lot agricultural A4 zone. It's to permit the use of the proposed lot for residential purposes. The lot comprises an area of approximately 2,263 square meters or 0.6 acres and a frontage of 31 meters or 102 feet and a depth of about 73 meters or 239 feet. The zoning of the retained farm parcel is comprised of an area of 60 hectares or 148 acres, a frontage of 289 meters or 948 feet, and a depth of 1,007 meters or 3,304 feet. It's proposed to remain zoned as a special agricultural A2 zone. The changes in zoning are being requested to fulfill the conditions of an application for consent, E15-20, which was granted previously by the County of Elgin Land Division Committee. 
Thanks, Michelle. I don't see the uh, applicant or the uh, agent here. Uh, Diana, was there any comment received from outside the agency? Yes, you were the technician for contribution and go right into the old text. Thank you. Anyone in attendance wish to make comment? Any council members have any questions? We were in second of public meeting related to the bylaw amendment application to Kim and Mary Stover related to property in the law 2829 and 73. We adjourned until the week of the meeting. 735. Louis, Lindsay, all favor? Yes. Finally, we can send a bylaw number 20 65 being bought from the Lynn's own bylaw number 18 22. Insofar as it relates to the property moved by Kevin Anthony and Mary Stover, you know, part lot 28 and 29 and set three. We have the first, second, third reading of the property seven. Moore, Jair, or Jair? Yes. Next, we have a community adjustment. Uh, the purpose of this hearing is to consider an application for minor variance as submitted by John and Annie Wall, application B6 20, from law 35 in session 7LI 53226 here in this line. Michelle, can you give an, an overview of the application? Yes, Your Worship, through you, the purpose and effect of this variance is to grant relief from the small lot agricultural A4 zone and its applicable regulations in the Township of Malahide zoning bylaw number 1822, which require a maximum floor area of 200 square meters for an accessory building. The variance will permit the enclosure of a roof shelter, which is measuring about nine meters by eight meters at the rear of an existing barn such that that building is increased in floor area to approximately 367 square meters. So it is exceeding the uh, maximum floor area. However, staff have reviewed it and have determined that it is minor in nature and have no objections and would support the approval of the application. Thank you. Your worship, we just need that first building. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Diana. We were in second meeting with Justin County now. I have to call the order at 17. Mr. Wall, did you have any further comments on this application? Uh, no. Do you have any questions? For Potentially, you might be. Uh, um, anyone else who is wishing to make comments on this application? The audience? Any members of the council? Any questions? That all these? We need to move on the second report number PCS 20 28, that a minor variance review, areas line to receive, but notwithstanding the section 5.221 is only. Central buildings are not to exceed 200 square meters, 2,153 square feet, the lands in the small line of lot agricultural A4 zone. Minor variance application to John Lane Wall and the real property, the gate of 53226 shares of mine, allow relief for construction. The accessory building on the subject lot, which is both have a total floor area of approximately 367.1 square meters, to man. Secretary Lewis, Lewis, all in favor? Yeah, And while we're in the committee of adjustments, the second application, uh, the applicant is 
is Jim and Rita Robinson, application is B720, R520, concession 12, uh, Malahide, 111, Road. Michelle, can you give an overview of this application? Yes, Your Worship, through you, the purpose and effect of this variance is to grant relief from the Hamlet Residential HR Zone and the applicable regulations in the Township of Malahide Zoning Bylaw that require that accessory buildings not be erected in a front yard and not be closer to the road than the dwelling is to that road. The variance will permit the construction of a detached garage measuring approximately 7.62 meters by 15.2 to four meters in a front yard. It is facing Spring and Water Road and it would be closer to the road than the existing dwelling is. Staff again have reviewed the application and the proposal and have determined that in our opinion, it is minor in nature and are recommending approval of the application, Your Worship. Okay, thank you, Jill. Is the applicant for hearing? Diana, is there any comment to see the that agency? Yes, Your Worship, one letter to that is the conversation we're going to make more comments. Any questions for the members? We were in the second report to the DCS 20 29 for the minor hearings for you, 11181 Springfield Road to receive, and that notwithstanding section 6.3.2 of the zoning bylaw of the DC 22 states, Accessory buildings not be erected in the front yard, not close to the road that the dwelling is to that road. Minor variance application of Jim and Peter Robinson to the property, which is 11181 Springwater Road, will now relief. Accessory building being built in the front yard or close to the road that the dwelling is to the road of the plan. Is it second to this? I'll move it. Sir, no, Winter, no, Terry. 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 Yep. And over the second, the of Justice the County of Malheim to be adjourned. Council will be seven forty two. In the second, here, uh, Vincy, okay. Mr. Next, we have a delegation. Uh, Mr. Masuba, are you here? Sir, come on up and uh, the chair, you'll have to turn the mic on. So we'll be able to hear you when you turn the mic on. My colleague. Son? Good. Uh, yep. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for allowing us to present our course. Can you hear Michelle? No. Either you have to turn it up, Cecil, or not be able to speak directly into it. Um, so yeah, okay. Thanks. Thanks for allowing us to bring our greetings to the concern of the road and the Avon Road. That's the turn. I've just been there. This is where we can talk together. Move to this area, neutral area, with uh, concern. The, the residents apparently uh, all up in arms with my concern. So I've got here 620 um, signatures in the UBC group of uh, the neighbors. The biggest concern is the speed of the possible. They seem to have just no concern. Uh, at all times, we were late in regular cars. We were kind of seen. There are 50 uh, kilometer signs posted on the north side, a couple of meters uh, as you need the Avon and the south side. None of those things can be concerned with anyone. Uh, the only way I got to get here today is I saw a sign posted. And Crampton, you know, local geography. So 
которые не Thank you, gentlemen, for your presentation. So we, have, we understand your concerns with you and your family. Uh, any comments or questions for council? I have a Jeff? comment. I have a comment, Mr. Mayor. Okay, go ahead, Rick. Okay, thank you. Um, I advocated uh, uh, photo radar long ago, and uh, it's actually cost prohibitive for the township to do that. But speed laws and, and all that stuff means nothing unless you get enforcement. And I don't care if we're talking Elmer police or Malhide 
um, OPP. One cruiser sometimes isn't enough. And we should be asking them to put a little more effort into it. Maybe give us, you know, set up a speed trap or do something because one cruiser can't patrol the whole township all at once. And I think that's our problem is, is, is we lack enforcement. So um, I, don't, I don't know what the answer is, but, but uh, we, need, we need more than just one. And if we can look into that and maybe get an extra guy once in a while, if you can get 10 OPP cruisers in an accident scene, surely God, you can get two to set up a speed trap. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mayor Vanell, I remember that you All right. If I remember correctly, we discussed this a number of years ago, and uh, there were a number of ideas uh, kicked around at that time, both the speaking uh, and that as far as the presentation. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think what I suggested at that time. At least I suggested it because it works in Brownsville, and that's a four way stop. And uh, that's what I would suggest that whoever uh, put into this situation consider a four way stop. Does that mean that the cars and the trucks have to come to the mid stop again? You're going up at 80 and they have to do the sign and then. And then uh, the pit right has to stop because uh, they should deal with cost. And uh, it works at the ground floor. And I know the ground floor a number of times. And I've never seen anyone go through without coming to a full stop. So that would be my suggestion. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with the part of the justice. Suggestion. My question is that's a split panel. One side is Mass Center, this side is Malama. It's also a split county that it starts from the north, out into the south. My question is that this concern that they can attend center talks. I agree with the problem and I'm willing to do that again to resolve it, but also a part of it on that road. I'm sure that people haven't been very aware of it. Take care of West Thank you. Thanks, Max. And certainly, um, my suggestion is to turn this over to staff and staff are into it. And prior to that, we have to be correspondent with uh, Middlesex County in regard to a big problem. Did you have one more question, sir? Um, I just wanted to add to what the mayor did. I have a meeting on the school bus. Sir, did you have a comment? Yes, um, I did get out of the corner on that intersection, and I um, heard people say that all the four way stops and these big breaks that night. Actually, my bed is on the first floor on the day floor, and my head is about 10 feet from that road. Run. I know that I can and I would not mind hearing truck stops if I know what's going on. I'm the first to drive myself. Matter of fact, they fall down I have to go and drive the No truck, a lot of them are actually struggling to scale. If you have a job, it can go. People are having to use the kind of platform. That was a whole problem. 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 That
There might not be scale of some of our lines sold in the top of the world wide scale. I've been able to work with the company. I watched scale go back down by coming down from the Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions from council? I'm going to move to the second of the presentation we received from Sebastian and Susan, expecting concern related to speed, vehicle, equipment, uh, road, and name on drive to receive. The municipal staff is directed to review the concerns further, report back to council on the future meeting with respect to any recommendations recommended by the board. Move by second by chair, Chair. Okay. Thank you, folks, for coming down and stressing your, your uh, issues. Arun, you're next with the uh, budget templates. So the first report I have for you today is a sample budget template for consultation. Sorry, Your Worship, to interrupt, but it is difficult to hear. If I can ask you to speak up, Arun, that would be helpful. Thank you. Yes, Michelle, I have to learn to project like you. So, uh, uh, the first report I have before Council tonight is a sample budget template uh, for the upcoming budget deliberations. And open to questions or suggestions. Comments or questions for Arun on the temples? So I, I did email my suggestion for a little bit more detail. And in fact, um, the I think what is missing are the actual from previous years and the uh, the variance. And I, I don't have the email in front of me that I forwarded. But the idea is to a reflect what we discussed at the end of the cycle uh, last year, and also, in fact, the information that we provide now in the report of the report. Essentially, yeah, I think I would expect to see in the and to see the four years at once, so from the 19th of May on to the 15th of June. That would be helpful. Any other questions or comments? And then we'll move to the second report, uh, FIN-2015, and then about the temporary reason. Uh, Louis, here, or David? Yes. And here. Carry on with the COVID uh, Right, and so in the next report, in front of you, a couple of uh, administrative process changes that the President Council will do. Um, there have been a few that have been put in place. These were a couple that were met off, hoping that things can change, but it doesn't seem to be trending very different. So we request that we uh, extend the concession deal contract that we want to have a letter for DC. Since the group did not open this year at all, it was the whole facility was being shut down. We would ask that the contract be essentially extended by the year, and we uh, request that the contract amount that was due this year would be next year and so on. And the other request we have got for my staff is that we proceed to mail out dog tags and they will be permanent dog tags. So that uh, the requirement for residents to have to step outside and come to the beach of office with a ticket would be eliminated or reduced, and the you know, uh, as a preventive measure, that's a good thing. Thanks, Randall. It's also where common sense approaches in. No. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
the in this report, there's also a suggestion that the two percent increase is that for discussion during the budget deliberation. That could definitely be in budget deliberations. This would the ABCP essentially be the SP and the it's not set in stone. The documents would be laid out early January. So at that point, we would have a budget the mailing that we're discussing will happen in this year or next year? It would be at the, we are proposing it would be at the beginning of next year um, since it's typically up in the March that we have our uh, standard of time piece to work in. So we don't know what the cost is. What we have here is the planning budget. Do we know what it will cost? Do we know those plans? The mail out cost is um, not quite clear at this point. Um, to the uh, if um, one because because we are now proposing this to be dog tags so that they are better quality so we can have the historic dog tags, they are expected to be a little more than the kind of typical LED ones. So we're expecting the postage costs to go high. Um, so there is some uh, estimate in the budget, but I don't think the cost at this point. So we expect it to go from the point budget. By that point, we will be So I, I guess I'm wondering why we would approve this language because, because I feel I don't know how much it's going to cost. I feel like I don't know what we are doing. So, if you look at the 28 uh, actuals uh, and the premium, that included the cost of mail out of all dog tags in 2018. And so, I'm anticipating that we may have to choose that much this year or a little bit more because it might be a little more. But that's the estimate that's there. So, I don't expect it to be. Uh, of being a great kind of cost change from what we have in the budget. Any other questions? Thank you, Gary, for your room. I guess the old days of the tag team here, the hero, the main you've got a better tag at home than the last. Yes. Shocking how much they wear one year. Right, yes. So we have uh, Sort out quotations from several different vendors for the same three tags, which is clear that we can sell only for a few months. And we have looked at some other municipalities, British units, government tags as well. So it will be something like that. And it will have the placement tag that we have already have the placement tags already. Um, comments, I know I had a dog that was crazy, so never read that. Thank you. Any other questions? Move to the second report number FIM 2016 with COVID 19 related administrative process changes in the 2020 annual budget for the Valhai Community Place and Session Group contract to waive the existing contract is extended for two years. The revised rate for 2021, 2022, seven and eight thousand respectively. We have an issue to mail out a permit dog tag with annual invoices to be approved for able to implementation in 2020. So, move by uh, Gore, seconded by Lindsay. In favor? Yeah. Here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, third quarter review. Yes, Mr. Mayor, my last report for 2019 is the uh, review of the actions um, for the operating capital project for the state of the township. And I have also reviewed the forecast. And this is something that has been asked of our council. And I have finally gotten to the point of confidence for this board. I'm sorry, Your Worship. For those of us that are online, it's very difficult to hear what the discussions are. Uh, I'm not sure whether Councillor Cern is having better luck with his 
sound system than mine, but um, if we could ask individuals to speak directly into the microphones, it would be helpful, not just for staff, but some members of council. It's been difficult to hear too. Thank you. So I have the third quarter um, operating results and the forecast for the operating and capital budget. Um, I'm over to the question. Questions for the room? Right. Yes, we're looking at some of the budget today. We have a lot of vehicles. Sorry, come to the Can you hear me? There's something wrong with the conference. Okay, thank you, Ruth. Uh, looking at some of the budget today. We have a lot of vehicles listed in certain sections. We can fill in the vehicle they are. And what's that? You know, budget items that won't spend a lot of money with here. But is that possible to put down the number of the truck or what it is, whatever it is? They are numbered. Um, I don't know what that is. Right. Um, I, I think we need to do that. I don't know what the number is. It's going to affect the accounting system. I think we need to put that down. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank or whatever. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a clarification for the safe restart funding. So the full allocation we received is 195. That's right. The allocation is 195. And in the I was trying to understand the 174. Right. So well, what that spend. is is actual spending uh, spend and expect to spend by the end of the year. So out of the 195, we would use the 174 for the costs that we've already incurred. And as for the provision direction, the rest of the funds will be put in a separate reserve specifically for COVID related costs going forward. Um, I mean, did you not earlier do you not have a, a bigger shortfall in there? And the, the 56,000, can you not do that? The extra 20 something? The same we start funding is specifically for the impact of COVID 19. Um, in any which way that we can show that this is the result of COVID 19, either because we have to purchase something or we lost revenue. So that those costs have been separately identified and that's what they are expected to be. The other shortfall is not directly or indirectly a result of COVID-19. So I do not believe that we would be able to apply the funding to mitigate that shortfall. It's, uh, there will be a template coming forward from the province for reporting on the allocation money that we will receive. And I would expect that they would want sufficient background information to support it. I mean, so I didn't catch, um, would, would you be able to highlight where the other shortfalls are that are not related to COVID? Sure. So if, if you look at that table on page two of the report, um, the first three lines identify the COVID related cost, costs and savings for the net uh, impact of 170 then we are seeing a reduction in our levy revenue. We had uh, budgeted a certain number as based on the assessment that we had at the time of our budget. But since then, there have been uh, um, supplementaries issued and the assessments carried out and informed by MBAC, which has now resulted in when we did the final billing. We are actually, and not sorry, not final billing, but the supplementaries and the other um, reassessments that were done by MPAC have then resulted in a reduction to that revenue. So there are certain properties which are now chargeable the farm rate, not necessarily the residential rate. As a result, they will be losing some revenue there. And then there are uh, small amounts of. Um, increases and decreases to, to the various departments, which gives us a net actually savings we are expecting from a lower than budget level 44. So the net shortfall then 
is 230, but because the 174 is covered by the provincial funding, the township's total shortfall is 56 successes. Thank you. Any other questions for me? Well, there could be some money coming from the province of the federal to hold it to make up the loss we have, correct? Right. When will that money flow, do you know? Yes. Uh, I believe we were to receive it either this week or we may have, or maybe next week. So they had they had announced it in September and they had said within a month or so. So we should be receiving this 190 by 100 should be coming to us very soon. So soon. If not this week or that. That's good news, uh, like around one, like that. Be around two. <laughs> well, the round two funding that they have informed us is is not the round two is a bit of a misnomer. It basically is for situations where the funding for the 2020 costs is not adequate, and therefore they are asking us to apply for the round two funding and then if we can show that our 2020 costs were more than the 195 or we expect them to be more than the 195 then we would have to submit an application but i do not believe the township is in that situation from the event so far. Hmm. Thank you. any other questions comments? i mean projected we're looking at a fifty-six thousand dollars shortfall and my understanding is that we would probably not qualify for round two we don't fall in that category, but uh, uh, we'll see where round two funding comes out and we'll see how bad we are. We may not be as bad as projected, but I know you're, you're looking at worst case scenario. Right, so we are looking at about the hundreds. For the year, and then 2021 would be what? Any other questions, comments? So, the, the overall projection is the 56,000 shortfall. So, the outside of COVID, just more. Um, and do you have any plans now of how or where will we cut that shortfall? Because then we have a forecast around uh, probably snow. Yeah, there are a few um, factors that would um, change the situation both ways. One is winter control, as you so rightly pointed out. The other one is the emergency response calls. If we have even one big event where our uh, responders have to be out for you know 24 hours, 36 hours, that that would be a big cost, whereas if we have the reduction in calls or you know, normal calls for the rest of the year, it may not be a big impact. A couple of other things that we are waiting to hear from is from the town of Ayala for the EDCC operating costs. So there are a few factors that are still fluid and which would make, uh, make the difference. At the end of the day. Thank you, Arun. Move to the second report that we're at. I am 20 17, the 2020 third quarter of financial review we received. Winner, owner, all in favor? Yes. Uh, scheduled council meetings, are you looking at them, Michelle? Yes, Your Worship, through you, I have one report for Council's consideration this evening, and that is with respect to establishing a schedule for Council meetings for 2021. Um, attached to the written report is the proposed schedule. I will draw your attention there. Um, Council's procedure bylaw indicates that typically um, we meet on the first and the third Thursdays of each month, although there are opportunities to amend that if it becomes necessary to do so. 
and staff are proposing that there be two cha three changes um, to that. The first one being that we change the April council meetings to be the second and fourth Thursdays in order to facilitate the Easter weekend or Easter holiday long weekend. The next one, the 1st of July, Canada Day, falls on our when we would normally meet, and that's a statutory holiday. So we're suggesting for July as well that we switch those meeting dates to the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. And um, again, uh, last year, or this particular year, council uh, determined that it was appropriate to move the meeting in August to the second week to in order to allow a little bit more spacing between the meetings during those summer months. And we're suggesting that that uh, continue to take place for 2021 as well. Thank you, Joe. Any questions for Joe? Or maybe just there now. I have the same concern as I had for the year when it's proposed, and I had to be doing the work meeting in August, and I believe that we must both be meeting once a month so that the first and third Thursday, and uh, this will be confident. Uh, um, I think this is the year we uh, make adjustments. Certainly, uh, it requires that we always follow a meeting. Uh, okay. Any other? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a question Have we looked at what, it would, what the calendar would look like if we went to the second and fourth? Because it just feels that now for a third of the year, we're switching back. We're going first and third, first and third, then second and fourth. So if the plan is for the meeting to be regular anyway, if we try the second and fourth for the whole year, it would work. Your Worship, through you, um, we haven't done that analysis. Um, we can certainly take a look at it. Um, as the historical precedent has been first and third Thursdays, that's what we've tried to adhere to. However, there, of course, are some, some complications and, and that's why we suggest some amended schedule. One of the reasons why we come, uh, come to you in October of each year as well is so that we can get those meeting dates established and that everyone can put them in their calendars and know when they are. So it may not be all first and third or all second and fourth, but at the same time, we're able to publish that calendar and be able to start to schedule things accordingly. Thank you, Joe. And uh, I have an issue with four Thursdays, so I'm glad I switched it to it. I always make accommodations. I think it's going to change the second. Any other questions? Comments? Mover and seconder for the recommendation. I'll move it. Turn out and Mover, all in favor? Yep. Opposed? Here. Next, we have the long point uh, conservation authority uh, minutes. Any questions or comments on that one? Mover and seconder for the uh, long point uh, uh, minutes, please. I'll move it. Pinsky and Lewis, all in favor? Yep. Here you go. Of correspondence, there's 11 items. Anyone wish to make comments, support for any of those items? Any additions? Move in second and receiving file. Winter, Jared, or Peter? Yes. Uh, other business? The bylaws. Uh, mover and sector bylaw number 20 54. In the bylaw to provide that the drainage work for the Underhill drain be read a third time, finally passed the proper side of the city. Linsky and uh, Lewis on favor? Yes.
And we were the second of that council moved into closed session at 820. Pursuant to section 239 2, the use of the Act 2001 is amended. Discuss a labor relation or employee negotiation matter relating to staff. Yes. Yep. Thank you for attending, folks. Uh, we are moving into closed session, so that means it's just the uh, council that is staff. Thank you for attending. Take care of all. Thank you for being at 832. Laura and Miguel are favor. Yes. Very Now that we're back to the open session, we were in secondary uh, bylaw number 20 64, the confirmatory bylaw, because the first, second, third reading, part of the sign and seal. Lewis. Winner. I'll second it. All in favor? Here yeah. again. And we were in the center of the council of Judas meeting at 8 34. Begin on November 5th at 7 30. Yes. Yeah.